Parents, don't shut your child down when he says, I don't want to wear that shirt, I want to wear that shirt. Those are ways that you help them to begin to know that their opinion is important, their opinion matters. Sit with your children sometimes and say, what do you think about this or what do you think about that? Encourage him to read stories, stories of politicians and statesmen of great integrity, stories of sports celebrities who have character, Bible heroes, war heroes who have been exceptionally brave and, and people who have overcome extreme difficulty. And one of the things you can do to help your son develop his mind is to encourage him to read. Buy him books. We're living in the age now where children are glued to sight and sound. And they can spend 10 hours a day before the television or the computer, but cannot spend 15 minutes with a book. Encourage your children to read. Welcome to Maximize Live, the television broadcast from New Wine Church London. Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Our mandate is to challenge you to be all you can be. So get ready to be encouraged, enriched, and empowered. You will never be the same again. Now here is your host, Pastor Michael Olawo. Thank you so much for joining us on the broadcast today. This is Maximize Life, where we encourage you to be all that you can be. I am Michael Olawo, your host and the senior pastor of New Wine Church. Today we are looking at a message by Dr. Tayo Adeyemi the founding pastor of New Wine Church London, who has gone home to be with the Lord. Today's message is titled, Raising Your Sons and Daughters. Stay tuned. Today, we want to look at the peculiarities of raising male children versus raising female children. Many times you will find in scripture that scripture will just refer to your children as children. But sometimes you will find the Bible using that expression, your sons and your daughters, as if to make a distinction between sons and daughters. Ladies and gentlemen, the reality is boys are different from girls. Who says amen to that? Boys are different from girls. They are different physiologically. They are different psychologically. They are different emotionally. They are different in their personality, in their outlook to life. They are different in their preferences. Look at a little girl playing by herself. She will sit down with four dolls and she will chat to all the four dolls for the next two hours. Look at a boy playing. He's playing with his truck or with his uh, whatever toy it is and he's going... He doesn't talk, he makes sounds. Because boys are power oriented, girls are a communication oriented. Now whilst there is a lot of common ground in raising male and female children, we must be aware of the peculiar areas. You will find it difficult, for instance, to get your boy to sit quietly and play with a doll. Likewise, you will be hard pressed to get your girl to really be brave and pick up a spider, even a dead spider. Of course, there are always exceptions to the rule and there are boys who grow up like girls and there are girls who have the dispositions of boys. But generally, the point we're making here is that boys and girls are different. I'm going to be talking to you about a book today, Bringing Up Boys. But let me read this to you. This is a book written by, uh, again, Dr. James Dobson. And um, many years ago, he got a letter from, from this girl, and the girl says, Dear Dr. James Dobson, P instead of B, I hope you like my list of girls are better than boys. You're a good guy. I'm a Christian. I love Jesus. And this is from a nine-year-old girl. And she said, Please don't throw my list away. The list is titled, Girls are more better than boys. And she's got 31 reasons why girls are more better than boys. I read them to you. Girls chew with their mouths closed. <laughs> girls have better handwriting. Yeah. Girls sing better. Girls are more talented. Girls can do their hair better. Yeah. Girls cover their mouths when they sneeze. Yeah. Girls don't pick their nose. <laughs> girls go to the toilet politely. <laughs> girls learn faster. Girls are more kinder to animals. Girls don't smell as bad. <laughs> Girls are more smarter. Girls get more things what they want. <laughs> now listen to this one. 
I'm trying, I'm trying to read it with a straight face. <laughs> Girls don't let stinkers as much. <laughs> Some of you don't know what a stinker is. That's fat. <laughs> Girls are more quieter. Girls don't get as dirty. Girls are cleaner. Girls are more attractive. Girls don't eat as much. Girls walk more politely. Girls aren't as strict. Girls sit more politely. Girls are more creative. Girls look better than boys. Girls comb their hair better. Girls shave more. Girls put on deodorant more often. Girls don't have as much body odor. Girls don't want their hair messed up. Girls like to get more tan. Girls have more manners. Of course, Dr. Dobson published this list and the reaction he got, nothing prepared him for it. When the boys wrote back, he compiled, <laughs> he compiled 47 reasons <laughs> why boys are more better than girls. Listen, boys can sit in front of a scary movie and not close their eyes once. Boys don't have to sit down every time they go. Boys don't get embarrassed easily. Boys can go to the bathroom in the woods. <laughs> Boys can climb trees better. Boys can hang on to their stomachs on fast rides. Boys don't worry about diet this, diet that. Boys are better tractor drivers than girls. Boys write better than girls, R-I-T-E, write. Boys can build better castles than girls. Boys can take pain better than girls. Boys are way more cooler. <laughs> Boys have less fits. Boys don't waste their life at the mall. <laughs> Listen, boys aren't afraid of reptiles. Boys shave more than girls. <laughs> now you're going to love this one. You're going to love this one. Boys don't do all those wiggly movements when they walk. <laughs> oh, God. Boys don't scratch. Boys don't braid one another's hair. Boys aren't smart Alex. Boys don't cry and feel sorry when they kill a fly. <laughs> Boys don't use as much deodorant. Boys were created first. <laughs> Boys learn to make funny noises with their armpits faster. Boys can tie better knots, especially girls' ponytails. Boys get to blow up more stuff. Without boys, there will be no babies. <laughs> now that's interesting. Boys with, eat with a lot of heart. Boys don't whine. Boys hum better. Boys are proud of their odor. Boys don't cry over a broken nail. Boys don't need to ask for directions. <laughs> That's a problem we carry into adulthood. Boys can spell Dr. Dobson's name correctly. Boys aren't cliquish. Boys don't hug the phone. Boys aren't shopaholics. Boys bait their own hook when they fish. Boys don't hang, hang pantyhose all over the bathroom. <laughs> Boys don't wake up with bad hair. I don't know what this one means. Boys aren't stinker. <laughs> Boys don't, now you love this one. Boys don't take two million years to get ready. <laughs> Boys couldn't care less about Barbie. Boys don't have to have 21 pairs of shoes. <laughs> Boys don't put a tub of makeup on all the time. Boys don't care if their noses aren't perfect. Boys respect everything and everyone, including girls. <laughs> okay, okay. 
Now, ladies and gentlemen, that's the reality. Reality is that boys are different from girls. Now, if God has given you only boys or only girls, be grateful for them. Hallelujah. Because remember that children are the heritage of the Lord. You know, it's amazing sometimes when a couple is believing God. They've had two boys or they've had two girls and they're believing God for the opposite sex the next time and it doesn't happen and they're totally distraught. We need to receive every child as a gift from God. Hallelujah. That's important. But today we want to consider areas that you need to focus on in raising boys and girls. You will find that this message generally applies to older children, usually from about the age of 10. However, there is no age that is too early to begin to apply some of the principles I will share with you today. Toward the close of the 19th century in America, during the Civil War, a gentleman by the name Josiah Gilbert Holland wrote a poem titled God. God give us men. I'll read it to you. It says, God give us men a time like this demands. Strong minds, great hearts, true faith, and ready hands. Men whom the lust of office does not kill. Men whom the spoils of office cannot buy. Men who possess opinions and a will. Men who have honor. Men who will not lie. Men who can stand before a demagogue and damn his treacherous flatteries without winking. Tall men, sun crowned, who live above the fog in public duty and in private thinking. For while the rabble with their thumb one creeds, their large professions and their little deeds mingle in selfish strife, lo, freedom weeps, wrong rules the land, and waiting justice sleeps. Hallelujah. And I believe that even in our day today, that's a prayer we need to pray, that God should give us men. But ladies and gentlemen, in reality, God does not give us men. He gives us boys. And it is our responsibility to make them into men. Even about Jesus, in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, the Bible says, Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. He was born as a child, but he had to be raised and developed to become a man or a son. God gives us the raw materials, and we do the construction. Today, I want to share with you five areas that we need to be paying attention to as we raise our boys to be godly men. I'll run through them and take each of them in detail. Number one, teach your boys to stand alone. Teach them to stand alone. Number two, teach them to be sensitive to God. Number three, teach them how to deal with temptation. Number four, teach them how to handle money. And number five, teach them the value of hard work teach them the value of hard work. Let's look at the first one, teach them to stand alone. Turn your Bible with me please to Proverbs chapter 1, Proverbs 1, 10 to 16. My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. If they say, come with us, let us lie in wait to shed blood. Let us lock secretly for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them alive like shield and whole like those who go down to the pit. We shall find all kinds of precious possessions. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Casting your lot among us, let us have all have one purse. My son, do not walk in the way with them. Keep your foot from their path. For their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed blood. I want you to look at the three distinct instructions in this passage. In verse 10, it says, do not consent. Verse 15, do not walk in the way with them. Verse 15 again, keep your feet from their path. Ladies and gentlemen, it's important to teach your boys that it's okay to be different. Did you hear what I just said? It's all right for them to have a different opinion. Teach them that they don't always have to go with the majority because sometimes the majority is wrong. Let them know it's all right to disagree with others without being disagreeable. Let your son know that he will be enticed to sin. How many of you know how much peer pressure our children come under today? It's almost unbelievable. And if you don't teach your child to know how to make up his own mind and decide for himself, he will be sucked in with the pressure of the majority. Are you hearing me? Teach him that he must learn to take a stand for what he believes to be right, even if he has to stand alone. 
Amen. And one of the ways you develop that is that you allow your children, especially your boys, to have their own opinion. Let them voice their opinion. If you are painting their room, let them choose the color. If you are afraid they're going to choose a crazy color, give them an option of three colors. You know, parents, don't shut your child down when he says, I don't want to wear that shirt. I want to wear that shirt. Those are ways that you help them to begin to know that their opinion is important. Their opinion matters. Sit with your children sometimes and say what do you think about this or what do you think about that is somebody listening to me teach your boy that standing alone is not a sign of weakness it is a sign of strength Ibsen the Norwegian poet said the strongest man on earth is the one who stands most alone however let your boy know that standing alone is not the same as being standoffish it's not the same as being cantankerous selfish insensitive intolerant or isolated now, in order for your boy to know how to stand alone, you need to teach him three things. How many things? Three. Number one, teach him how to choose his friends. Proverbs 13, 20 says, He who walks with the wise will be wise, but a companion of fools will be destroyed. Most children don't know how to choose friends. Most children make people their friends who are attracted to them. And most of the time, those people who are attracted to your child are the wrong kind of people. So you need to teach your boy how to choose his friends because your boy will eventually become like the boys that he spends his time with. Are you listening to me today? So walk with him. Help him draw up a list. You know, sit down together and say, what are the qualities of a good friend? What do you think a good friend is? Come up with a list of five points or so that make a good friend and tell him, him before he chooses a friend he needs to look for those things in a friend teach your son how to recognize fools the Bible says a companion of fools will be destroyed teach your boy how to know who and what a fool looks like let him know that not everyone who is attracted to him is supposed to be his friend number two teach him to choose between right and wrong let him know that every wrong deed has its consequences Hebrews 11.25 talks about the passing pleasures of sin. Everything that is wrong has an initial pleasure, but it is only momentary. And the negative consequences will last much longer and will be much stronger. Thirdly, expose your boy to positive role models. Listen, children love power, especially boys. Who knows that? That's why they're interested in Spider-Man and in Action Man and all of those comic book heroes and cartoon heroes that exude power. That's why a boy will say, my dad can beat your dad. Once a boy told his friend, he said, my dad can beat your dad. And the boy said, that's nothing. My mom can beat my dad. <laughs> So encourage you, expose your son to a, a positive role models, living or dead. Expose him to biographies, encourage him to read stories. Stories of politicians and statesmen of great integrity. Stories of sports celebrities who have character. Bible heroes, war heroes who have been exceptionally brave. And, and people who have overcome extreme difficulty. And one of the things you can do to help your son develop his mind is to encourage him to read. Buy him books. We're living in the age now where children are glued to sight and sound. And they can spend 10 hours a day before the television or the computer, but cannot spend 15 minutes with a book. Encourage your children to read. So that's the first thing. Teach him to stand alone. Number two, teach him to be sensitive to God. Turn your Bible with me to Proverbs chapter 3, verses 11 and 12. Proverbs 3, 11 and 12. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as a father, the son in whom he delights. Teach your son to develop a heart that is tender towards God. Let him know that it's okay to cry in God's presence. Let your boy know that it's not manly or masculine or macho to be stubborn with God. And hey, guess what? Women love men who are sensitive to God. Who says amen to that? Amen. So as your boy is growing up, that's an added incentive for him. All right? Two ways to help your son develop a heart that is sensitive to God. Number one, teach him to respect your own counsel. 
Proverbs chapter 4, 20 to 22. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For their life to all who find them and health to their flesh. If your boy can respect your counsel, eventually he will respect the counsel of God. Secondly, teach him to respect the correction of other people. There will be other people in his life who are not his parents that will bring correction. Teach him to accept that correction. Proverbs 19 verse 20 listen to counsel and receive instruction that you may be wise in your latter days praise the name of the Lord so the first thing is you teach him to stand alone secondly you teach him to be sensitive to God thirdly teach him how to deal with temptation now you know that's a whole broad subject but I'm going to narrow it down to two things that we see standing out in the book of Proverbs the first one is sexual temptation and the second one is the temptation of alcohol let's talk about sexual temptation go with me to Proverbs 5 we're going to be opening a lot of passages today Proverbs 5 verses 1 to 5 now, I know I'm moving very fast, but it's because I've got a lot of ground to cover. Proverbs 5, 1 to 5. My son, pay attention to my wisdom. Lend your ear to my understanding, that you may preserve discretion, and your lips may keep knowledge. For the lips of an immoral woman drip honey, and her mouth is smoother than oil. But in the end, she is bitter as warm wood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death, her steps lay hold of hell come with me to proverbs chapter 6 from verse 20 my son keep your father's command and do not forsake the law of your mother bind them continually upon your heart tie them around your neck when you roam they will lead you when you sleep they will keep you and when you are awake they will speak with you for the commandment is a lamp and the law is a light reproofs of instruction are the way of life to keep you from the evil woman from the flattering tongue of a seductress do not lust after her beauty in your heart nor let her allure you with her eyelids for by means of a harlot a man is reduced to a crust of bread and an adulteress will prey upon his precious life can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned can one walk on hot coals and his feet not be saved so is he who goes in to his neighbor's wife. Whoever touches her shall not be innocent. Listen closely to me today. Whether you like it or not, your son will learn about sex. And you have a choice to make. Either he learns it from you or he learns about it from his mates at school. Now, if truth be told, if I ask for a show of hands in this place, you will be amazed how many people will admit that their first information about sex came from their mates at school. Now, how much do your mates at school know? Are you listening to me, ladies and gentlemen? Now, it's not enough for you to tell him what he should not do. You also have the responsibility to tell him how, how to overcome sexual temptation. And I'm going to give you uh, uh, five points here very quickly. Number one, teach him how to control his thoughts. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, that sex does not start down there in the groins. It starts up here in the brain. I trust that this message has enriched you and challenged you to be all that you can be. If you have any question, comment, or prayer request about what you have heard today, do not hesitate to contact me using the details on your screen, and I will be glad to serve you as best as I can. Also, if you happen to be in or visiting the London, Excess, or Kent area of the United Kingdom, we encourage you to come and worship with us at New Wine Church. All our service details are on your screen right now. Well, to the next time of Maximize Life, God bless you. We hope you have been blessed by today's broadcast. For more details about the dynamic ministry of Dr. Tayo Adeyemi, please contact us using the details on your screen or visit newwine.co.uk.